Today, I'm going to show you how to use a vector mask in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use a vector mask, which is a great way for cutting things out of their background. I love this method because it allows you to see a live preview of what you're actually cutting out. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you the differences between a regular layer mask and a vector mask. We're going to show you how to add a vector mask to an image and also how to change a pen path after you've added that mask. So if you're going to be cutting something out in the background, a vector mask is a wonderful option. All right, we got a great episode, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. So here's our image for today, and you can download this image following the link right down below. This is my Hasselblad, my own personal film camera. And uh, let's start off with the difference between the layer mask and the vector mask. So we've got a regular layer here. I'm going to go to Layer, down to Layer Mask, and to Reveal All. It just creates a white layer mask. Now, with a layer mask, if I paint black, I'm just going to use the brush tool here. If I paint black on my layer mask, you're going to see it makes this layer invisible wherever I paint black. Now, if I switch and start painting white, there we go, you can see white is my foreground color, it's going to make this back visible again. So we use layer masks all the time in Photoshop. It's incredibly common. Now, I, I can right click right here and see like disable layer mask, delete layer mask, apply layer mask, and some different options there. So layer masks are used for any tools, uh, basically like brush tool, clone stamp tool, healing brush tool, any tools that actually apply to a layer. So let's go ahead and delete that layer mask. There we go. And it's completely gone. Now we're going to work on adding a vector mask. So let's go to layer down here to vector mask and go over to reveal all. So we have a reveal all vector mask. Now it looks pretty much the same. I can right click on it and you can see that it does say now disable vector mask instead of layer mask. So you know it is a vector mask. Well, let's go ahead and click on our vector mask. There we go. Clicking on it will activate it. And I'm going to click here on my pen tool. You can hit P for the pen tool. And now I'm going to start moving my pen tool and creating a pen path around my image. And you can see as I go around my image, we're getting a live preview of what this is actually going to be cut out. Now, this is incredibly cool because the pen path will allow you to change your path at any point in time. So I just did like a really rough circle right around the camera. But I'll show you, you can actually change those points and use them to cut out any object in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and alter those points. And then later, we're going to just load in a path and use that to completely cut out the camera. OK, so you can see, obviously, I didn't try to do a really great job cutting this camera out. But we do now have a vector mask. So I can click on here. We can right click and disable it temporarily. There we go. And enable it again. Now, here is my pen tool. So if I want to change any of the points here on my actual path, I can simply hold Control or Command, which gives me this white arrow. And then I can click here on any of these points and move them around. So we get a live preview of what's actually being cut out of my image. Now I'm going to just do this really rough to include. There we go. We are going to be including our entire camera now. Now this isn't necessarily the, the way that I would do this. Obviously, I would want to start a path that actually follows around my object and then try it there. So let's go ahead and try that. So if you do need to move things around, just remember Control or Command, and you can move any of these points around to change your path. And if you need any help using the pen tool, just go to flurn.com, type in pen tool into the search bar. We've got some great episodes on using the pen tool. OK, well, let's go ahead and delete this vector mask. I want to I start over again. So look, we're going to click here and delete our vector mask. Click and drag that to delete. Now, let's go ahead and create a pen path. So I'm still on my pen, pen tool. I'm going to zoom in here. And now we're going to click a couple of times. Let's go to our paths, and I'm going to create a new path. We'll just call this path two. That's OK. And we're going to click a couple of times here on the edges of our camera. So there we go. Click on these guys. When we have a curve, all you have to do is click and drag. There we go, to follow the shape of the curb. There we go, Alt or Option. And we'll just start following this down here. Now, I've already cut this camera out, so I'm not going to spend 10 minutes doing it on this episode. I just want to give you guys, let's just say we did like a really rough version of this. OK, we'll show you the. 
the, the super rough version. All right, so I'm just going to click. Um, you can be very precise with the pen tool. I'll show you that in just a second. But for now, I'm going to show you the Aaron cuts this out of the background in three seconds with the pen tool because we're in an episode and I don't want it to take forever. We're going to do that version. All right. There we go. And almost done. See, I'm not even going to put round for the lenses. But you'll get an idea of how vector masks actually work. So there we go. We're almost done. And you can see I'm just clicking at, at this point here. What you really want to do is click and drag to, to create your curves. But I'll show you how to actually fix curves using a vector mask. So I just cut that out. It's, again, really rough. That's not how you would actually cut something out of the background. Make sure to check out our pen tool episodes on how you do that. But now that we have that very roughly cut out, on my layer, I can go to Layer, down to Vector Mask, and I'm going to go to Current Path. So the path that I just created now cuts my camera out of the background. And here's the cool part. Because we cut it out and it was, again, relatively rough, I can still go in here and refine this and we get a live preview of our actual cutout. So let me go in. I'm going to change some of those angles. We're going to change them to curves so you get a good idea of what a good selection actually looks like. So now what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and refine this. So starting off here, you can see my pen path, it's kind of just like angled and I wanted to include some curves. Now, here's a cool tip. If you want to see a little bit of your, like what is behind your image, like what the layer mask is hiding, simply go to Window and down to Properties. Okay, and here we can see we're on the properties of our vector mask. Okay, and you can actually change the density of your vector mask. So as I bring this down, you're going to see, I'm able to actually see through the vector mask. Okay, so this gives me a really nice preview of what actually would look like if there was no mask there at all. Okay, and this is not permanent. You can always just bring your density all the way back up. So, for instance, if I zoom in, zoom in, okay, still using my pen tool, let's, instead of having this, you can see it's a point here, comes to a point there and point there, I can hold Control or Command and click here to drag that down, okay? I can hold Alt or Option and I can make this into a curve and I can simply bring this up and around there. All right, let's go ahead and bring our density up. So you can see, as I change this curve, we'll zoom out a little bit, as I change where this actual path is, it changes, there we go, it changes the vector mask itself. So it's a really great way to get a live preview of what you're actually cutting out. Okay, let's do it again for right over here. So let's say we have that as a point. If I want to turn this into, there we go, if I want to turn that into a little bit of a curve, all I have to do is hold Alt or Option, and I can turn any point into a curve really quickly and easily. So again, it's just a great way to see a preview. Let's go right up here. We'll change this to a curve as well. So Alt or Option, click and hold that down. There we go. And we'll just bring this up there as well. And again, you can see, oh, we've included a little bit too much. Just hold Control or Command, click on this point and drag it right down there until you have a perfect selection around your object. There we go. So we see a live preview. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a solid color adjustment layer. Okay. And we'll just put that right behind our camera. So now you can see it really is a very nice curve right around that area. And again, it started off, you know, looking something like that, that we did pretty quickly. But again, hold Alt or Option and you can turn any point into a curve and then just kind of pull it out a little bit. And then there we go. Get a good idea of how to create a nice curve on an object. So vector masks are really cool. Let's do it here on the lens just a little bit. I just want to make sure you guys know how versatile vector masks are so you can actually start using them. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull that around there. And as you can see, there's a live preview of what you're actually cutting out. So you don't, it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of cutting objects out of their background. There we go, because you don't have to create selections and then load those selections as a layer mask and all that stuff. It just shows you exactly what you got. Very cool. All right, so that's the idea behind using vector masks. Now, I went ahead and already created a nice path around my camera. So let's go ahead and load that in and you'll see what a perfect path we can get using a vector mask. So let's start off here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this vector mask that we already created. There we go. 
Now I'm going to go back to our paths, and this is a pen path that I made earlier. I just went ahead and called it camera, and I spent a little bit more time on it and tried to do a good job cutting out our camera. So again, just with the pen tool, kind of tracing it around. So let's go ahead and click on our camera path. There we go. And again, you can download this exact image with this camera path already applied to it. Uh, just follow the link right down below. So you can download this and then practice on your own. Okay, so here we have our camera path. Now I'm gonna go to layers. We're gonna go to our layer zero here, and we'll just go to layer, down here to vector mask, and I'm gonna go to current path. There we go. So you can see it's cut out perfectly and even if I zoom in here, you can see even all the little gears and things like that are cut out from this path. Now, after it's cut out, we can right click here and you can see I can disable this, I can delete it, or I can rasterize it. Now, you may want to rasterize this. If I click there, rasterize, what this does is it turns it from a vector mask now into a layer mask. So, as a layer mask now, you can see it's got really sharp edges outside like the what's you know, defining the edge of the camera, which makes sense. But there are some times when you want those edges to have a little bit of feathering. So like a little bit of blur sometimes helps people like blend into the background. So in that case, I would recommend doing what we just did. Let's just undo that again so I can show you. So you can either choose feathering here as a vector mask, okay? You can choose to feather it right within the properties dialog. There we go. Or if you want even more control, simply right click on your vector mask itself, rasterize the vector mask, you can feather it from here, or you can even do things like click here and add a blur. So we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and there we go. You can add a, <laughs> I don't know why you'd add that much of a blur, but you can add a little bit of a blur to a layer mask if you want. And now it's a regular layer mask. You could just paint black or white with, a, with your brush tool if you wanted. So uh, let's just paint black on there and then I'll paint white on there again. Okay, and at any point in time, let's say you did something like this and you're like, oh, I messed it back up. How do I get back to where it was perfectly cut out? Uh, don't worry about it. Just drag this to the trash. There we go. Okay, just delete that. And now you still have your path, right? You still have the path that we used to cut it out. So just click on your path again, go back to your layer, go to layer, down to vector mask and current path. And there we go. You're completely cut out with a perfect selection. All right, guys, and that's how we use vector masks in Photoshop. To do this on your own, just follow these key steps. Start by creating a pen path to cut out your object. You can do a rough job here because you can always go back and edit this pen path. When you're ready, go to layer, down to vector mask, and go to the current path. If you need to alter your pen path at any time, simply hold control or command and click on any of your points. You can move them around. And if you want to turn a straight angle into a curve, hold Alt or Option and click and drag it out. You can turn it into a curve. This is a way you can see a live preview of cutting your image out. It makes it much easier to get an accurate selection around your image. Now when you're cutting your image out, if you're having trouble seeing your actual image, you can lower down the density of the layer mask. Simply go to Properties and lower down that density slider. You can even add feathering with the same dialog. And at any time, you can convert your vector mask to a layer mask simply by right-clicking on the vector mask and going down to Rasterize Vector Mask. And that's how we use vector masks in Photoshop. And you can download this exact image with the pen path intact. Just follow the link right down below. If you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode, just leave it in a comment right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. I'm gonna do some after mask. You know, no, no, no. Today, I'm gonna hide the nest mask. You know, no, no. Keep in mind that. Keep in mind that the vector mask. Keep in mind that vector. La, 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 la.